Well, that was a different performance. Much, much, well, well, well improved from the last game. Left City 3, Norwich 1. And again, thanks so much for joining us. Um, what are your thoughts on the game? Finally. Whew. What a relief. It's funny. We should probably be like, I think in previous weeks, we'd be smug, we'd be really happy and all this kind of stuff. I think we're just, what a relief, to be honest with you. Like, that felt more like a performance from when we were back in uh, our pomp, you know, when we got the nine wins in a row. I think it was really solid. I think the most encouraging thing is we had a big setback in this game and we still managed to win it. But I think overall, it was a, a really good performance. I just think we were good from start to finish. We can go for all the players. I think everyone had a good game. But look, at this point, when you're in a business end of the season, the honest truth is, is you could play absolute crap and still win, which is kind of funny. So the last game against Bristol City, we definitely didn't play that good, but we could somehow have managed it if Bardi had taken some of his chances. I don't necessarily think it was an unfair scoreline towards the end. Maybe a draw would be more of a fair result. But, you know, it, what I'm saying is if we'd have just, you know, shit house the win there, we'd have still have taken it. I'd have taken a shit house win today. But today, that was a very good performance, I think. Hopefully, that will boost some confidence. And I think for me, actually, the most impressive thing right at the end when we got the third is looking at the reaction of the players and the crowd. It's like, yeah, come on. Do you not remember that we're supposed to be a good team here? Um, it's still going to be very tense between now and the end of the season. But for me, relief. How about you? Pretty much similar. I mean, it was the for me, it wasn't even... We need to get the three points. That was the most important thing, which we got. But it also, as you mentioned, it was the intensity. It was the there were certain softer things in the game that may not be picked up if you watch the highlights. Which was there were people wanting it. Where the Bristol City game, they looked deflated, they looked flat. It looks like they were just coming off the back of um, well a few a few losses as well. So it, this game, there was stepping up, and we did make some substitutions coming into it. So made three subs from the th from the game against um, the game against Bristol City. So Daka came into starting line ahead of Jimmy Vardy. Ricardo Pereira comes in against Harry Winks, and also Doyle um, came in and had a JJ. So then three, but everybody else pretty much remained the same. I want to concentrate on a couple of people first. Um, I want to get your thoughts on Doyle. Um, today he was brought in over um, Wolf over J James Justin, um, and we've seen James Justin play not as great attacking wise in the game. But Doyle, I think, offered something very different to what James Justin did. And there was a few times where I think he kind of epitomizes this risk reward at times. Some of his passes were sloppy. Some of the balls weren't quite hitting the people or going out, but at least he was trying them. And I think that's what something that's the reason why he was brought into the team. And credit to Enzo for making the substitution. Yeah, I think he had a strong first half, second half less so, but I will say he kept going and kept getting into positions. Um, I think you're right. I have to say one thing that quite surprised me about this game was how passive Norwich were. So um, Norwich, they started the season, they were top of the league actually at one point, believe it or not. That was a long time ago, but they genuinely, after the first four games, people even said they thought Norwich were the best team in the league at that point in time, and it was true. Right, Josh Sargent got injured and they kind of fell off the cliff massively. But he's been back in the team and he's like a relentless presser. He's not necessarily the highest quality player, but he really gets stuck in. And in fact, if you look at his goals per minutes ratio, he's really been on it recently. So he's very strong. And David Wagner, also a German coach, and German coaches, you know, he's, he's Klopp's best mate, David Wagner. So you'd really expect them to kind of go back more to that pressing style, especially given, I feel, in recent weeks, the teams that have done the best against us have been trying to press us. Like Bristol City got a lot of joy because they dared to press us rather than just sitting back. Um, so for that reason, I think it may be, yeah, <laughs> from the, the official account, oh my God, even they know. Yeah. <laughs> that is kind of I just had to bring that up. I that, is, that, that, that says a lot. I mean, wow. I mean, that says that even the, the admins are feeling the stress. That really shows you that that's kind of nice that you see how connected everyone is. I mean, especially, you know, I haven't been on the show for a while and I'll be honest with you, one of the reasons it's been quite depressing to be honest with you, I think, especially with the... Um, no, 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 to be honest, well, just as a, I just want to go on a quick tangent and I'll hand it back. But I mean, for me, the FFP thing is the thing that really, really annoys me. And the thing why it annoys me, I think I might have a bit of a different take on this to other people. And that's because for me, like I'm a bit of a football purist. So the reason why I really love supporting Leicester City is, you know, I supported them for a long time anyway, since I was a kid. But that 15-16 win was purity. It was football romance. 
how many other fans were pleased for us because they were like, do you know what? Okay, it wasn't us, but could you imagine if Southampton won the league, if West Brom won the league, if Ipswich Town won the league, you know, Luton Town won the Premier League. Like, you would be happy for them because you'd want to see, like, one of these unfashionable teams having a dream, you know, and it'd give you the hope for football. So why I'm annoyed is that basically earlier in the season, we were kind of like, oh, look at Everton and Forest, they cheated and we've only got relegated because of it. Well, it turns out well, we were the filthy cheats as well. And I hate to break it to you, but this season, you know, because we haven't submitted our accounts, the honest truth is that probably means that we probably should be having a points deduction right now. So mm -hmm. people are going to say that Leicester have cheated this season. And I think you'd find it very hard not to agree with that. Anyway, I'm probably going to get absolutely roasted in the comments then, Neil. So if you want to ban me from the future, like, I'm just saying, as I, I would just rather us be a, a team and, you know, play it pure, that kind of thing. I get it that, like, you know, if you want to compete and it's not fair and it's rigged and all that kind of stuff. So that's been a dark shadow over the club. And that plus the performance is falling off a cliff. Like, how do you give away a 17-point lead? I do not know, to be honest with you. Especially when, to bring it back to today, we can play as well as we did today. Callum Doyle, yeah, I think he had a solid game. As you say, the risk-reward. The only thing, you know, why I was a bit surprised is that I thought Norwich might press us a bit higher up the pitch and therefore, like, push him back, but they didn't. And I think when a team doesn't press you and he's got freedom of the park, then he's much better to have in the team than JJ. Um, I do feel second half, though, he had the ball a bit and there were some things where he didn't... You know, he could have got a shot away, he could have got a pass, and he could have used the ball a bit better. But I think the first half, he did use the ball quite well. So he's a solid player for sure. I think he's going to be in the Premier League regardless next season. Be interesting to see who, which team he's playing for. Yeah, and this is probably another question for another time, especially because the game's coming thick and fast. We have been linked to a couple of left foot centre backs, even in the January of transfer window, and they've continued yeah. as we've gone through. Regardless of what happens with the whole FFP transfer embargo situation, whatever league we're in. We've, we'll we've been to linked to a, a left-handed lawyer, I've heard. That's the most <laughs> important signing we need to make right now. Yeah. And some litigations can... uh, specialist, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And then just but coming back into this game again, from the first 10 minutes, I, th I think we're both saying we're watching the game, the intent is there. And I think as the game progressed on, the intent seemed more there. That It seemed like the risk reward at times we were playing out from the back. It didn't work all the time. It, there was times where we get the ball away cheaply, which before we would be a lot more clinical. But you're mentioning about Norwich and how they performed. I think that played in Leicester's favour, going, look, we know what we're good at. Let's go and play our game. And I think as the game progressed, kind of with the goals, the team got better and better and kind of was returning to the old Leicester City that we were used to, which is why I was so critical in the last game um, and the last post-match, post because I was like, where's this team gone? But it's do, not for do, the do game you know what? Yeah. we're yeah. getting there. Well, do you know what? I'm just thinking through my head. To be honest with you, I think we were good for the entire 90 minutes, which is very rare for us. But I'm trying to think. We did start well. Yeah, we went behind. But even after we went behind, we were still making chances. It's not like we completely fell off, right? Um, and they didn't keep making lots of chances either. And then we got the equaliser. Then we started the second half really well. Then we got the goal. And then, you know, then we thought, because, you know, after normally when we get ahead, he, Enzo completely takes the foot off the gas. And whilst we maybe weren't going for it quite as much as we were when we were 1-1, we were still making some kind of half chances. And then in the end, we made it 3-1. Oh, that's interesting to see that. So to be Sorry, honest with you, I'm kind of thinking... No, that's fine. I mean, um, yeah, look, maybe the stats will say different, but I felt like watching the game, I think we had control of the game throughout. I think we were maintaining a threat throughout the game. And we were good throughout the game. Um, and they really scored against the run of play. I do want to give them a shout out, though. That was a fantastic set piece. I mean, we should copy that. You can see afterwards that they had the clip of them looking at their set pieces, coach. I mean, there you go. So there, yeah. And I'm guessing the first big dip there is when they scored. Yeah. And right at the end there, probably when we made some subs. But otherwise, yeah, look, throughout the whole game. And yeah, for sure, that sec start of the second half when we were pushing really hard to get the, uh, the you know, to get the winner. So, I'm pretty sure you won't see that from many of our games. I don't mm. recall much like that. So I think it was um, a really good performance just throughout the 90. There wasn't really much at all. And it was nice that, like, despite having a massive setback, sort of second-tier podcast going, oh, is the crumble coming out again kind of thing. But not this time, lads. Sorry. Stick you it up. You've you got to play, yeah. as you were saying it before, you've got to play the game. Um, yeah, the social media. The game and they're milking yeah. it. So yeah. do what you got to do at the end of the day. Don't get, again, if you're reading into it you're part of the problem do you know what i mean they wouldn't be doing it if they didn't get any responses from it we are part of the problem that's the issue so, <laughs> so coming into but back to the game i think there's a couple yeah. of players i really want to focus on um yeah. in this game first one i want to shout out is potentially i think you were saying as well man of the match 
um, Kin and Dujby Hall running the show um, from yeah. that midfield yeah, position, yeah, 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 yeah. linking up really nicely, um, creating the nice overlaps at times with Mavadidi, which we'll get onto in a bit, driving the team forward in a way and just providing, at times he was, what was really impressive as well, his ability when we were deep in the pitch to break out of that possession right and then set a team up, whether it's Daka, Fatal, Mavadidi, and play from deep and really drag, not drag that team, but it be able to find the pass and the right move at the right time, which I think is such a hard skill, especially in this the, the way that we play in a technical style. That's why the Premier League teams are looking at him. Yeah, I think when he plays like that, you're going to win the game in the championship. It's as simple as that. I mean, honestly, that's for this division, he's a joke. So he's not always like that. That's the one thing you can have against him. Uh, but when he plays that well, yeah, I just don't think he can. <laughs> I, I don't think it's possible to lose the game when he's playing that good. Honestly, that's that's what he is. Scored a goal. I think he got an assist. Could have had some more. As you say, I think he was a constant menace throughout the whole game. Fantastic performance. Yeah, one goal, one assist. And the other player yeah. that got one goal, one assist was yeah. Navadidi as well. Um, in terms of the how he performed today, because him and Fatal are, again, both play on the opposite foot to the side they play. Both kind of play in similar positions, but I think you were mentioning it, the fact that Fatal had better quality opportunities but missed them. But Mavadidi took on players more, didn't quite finish it off, but at the same time, he was the one that got the goal and assist. At the end of the day, they are wingers and that's what they're, they're designed to do. Yeah, it's funny. What, what I was mentioning is that in terms of their consistency, they're kind of interesting. I feel like Fatal, every game is pretty consistent what he's going to give to you. He like is always getting into the box. He's always making dangerous opportunities. The way he was combining with Wilfred and Diddy was fantastic. Those two have definitely got a great connection. The team plays so much better for it. So it's like a constant menace. But funnily enough, despite those two being a constant menace all throughout the game, I don't think a goal directly came from their play, which is kind of funny. Mavadidi, on the other hand, he's really inconsistent. Like sometimes he just does something that looks stupid. Like he just gives the ball away, he knocks it out of play, gets robbed of it, and it's just you think, what's he doing? But yeah, he's the one that scored significantly more goals than Fatawu. And also for that first goal, that's a brilliant header back in. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I think, as you say, with wingers, that's kind of the point. That's actually why some of the top teams have four wingers, because the point is, is that like they're very hot and cold because you've got to try your tricks. So some days you're just on it and you just look like a world-class player. Some days you look like you can't tie your shoelaces. And, you know, if you're having one of those days, you just take them off and put another guy on and hope that the second one's not having quite a bad game. Um, but yeah, today, I mean, it's funny, in that second half, that was a brilliant second half from Mavadidi. It wasn't just the goal, but I mean, that back heel assist that he pulled off, uh, that Kin and Juice Rahul, if he'd have scored that, the roof would have come off the King Power. And it just shows you what he can do um when he's on it inconsistent it's a funny one like we started the season saying we didn't really think he'd be good enough for the premier league then at some point i myself said i think he definitely is good enough for the premier league then in this recent run of games where we've been crap i really thought he's a league one player and now again i probably i think what we said at the beginning of the season is probably the most accurate like he's in that dwight gale zone of like probably too good for the championship maybe not good enough for the premier league we will see give him a chance but he's definitely got some skills and stuff especially with the physique he was quite good defensively again today which probably won't get noticed but he won the ball back quite a few mm -hmm. times coming back so he was really good i do think him and kdh today that's maybe the best they've combined in any game like sometimes i feel that they stand in each other's spaces a bit too much and they don't have the kind of because you know the funny thing is we watch the game quite often with Luke that's the city down under and whenever you get Fatawu gets the ball you just know in your head immediately you, you, you can see that indeed he's going to run into the pocket and he's going to drop the ball in and they did that in this game so many times like I think eight times at least I counted um but funny enough, you don't see that happen so often on the other side, even though KDH and Mavadidi score goals. But actually, to be fair to them, today I saw them combining a lot better a lot of the time. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite promising. And those two are a lot more lethal as a duo, um, which has to be said. So yeah, he. to be honest with you, I wouldn't have given him a match Mavadidi, but you could definitely make an argument for it, especially as I think the goal that he scored was very high quality as well. And I think the header that he put across, you know, he had to kind of get it plus the assist. And he's an entertainer and we do love an entertainer. And he is the most entertaining player. I think he's actually more entertaining to watch even than Fatawu, even though everyone loves Fatawu because he's got that kind of young buck vibe to him. I, I do he's like Mavadidi. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mavadidi does look like one of those stroppy players. But if he was on your team, you know that he's always capable of just like pulling it out and you'd probably let it go, get him away with it.
Yeah, and, and, and I'm with you. And just to kind of reflect, just to kind of back up what you're saying as well, if we look at the goals and his goals and assists, Kindred be scores, Man of the Day get assists, Man of the scores, Kindred Hall gets the assist. So it shows you again as an overly simplistic, but just to show you that it, it kind of is working and linking up as well. Um, mentioning on that side again, Wilfred and Diddy, just coming back into the team, some of his headers were a bit off at times. Um, but I think he's starting to, as you can kind of expect, as he's just coming back from injury. What do you? What did you make of him? Do you think this is a kind of is he is he s- secured that place down as his main spot now? Hundred percent, hundred for me. Low key, I think he was one of the better players in the game, which might sound crazy because you could probably name many other players. But honestly, other than what you're talking about, is he did receive a header at one point where even though he's really tall and he got to it first, he somehow managed to head it. It looked like out of the stadium. But I think other than that, he was making, you know, he put that cross in that Mabadidi knocked back for Kean and Drewsbury Hall to score the first one. He had another cross at the start of the first half, that came, second half, sorry, that came off the crossbar and was like really good. He was linking up with Fatal the whole time. He was making challenges. It's like, it is no surprise that when we're he's in the team, we're getting way more points than when he's out of the team. And it's hilarious because that used to be the case when he played as a number six. And now it's the case when he plays as a number eight. So he's just a good player and he's obviously giving you something. And yeah, it's like at the end of the season, you'll look at him and he won't have anywhere near the amount of goals as assists as, as Kin and Jewsbury Hall. But like I say, he's just one of those players that when he's in the team, the team plays better. It's just a fact. And I think he was very good today. Look, let's be honest, probably, yeah, Jusby Hall and Mavadidi are going to be getting eights and nines, so maybe Wilfred is more like seven, eight. But I think he was very good. The whole performance from him, I was quite impressed with him the whole way throughout. As I say, I think he's not quite back to his super-duper best, but he was a lot closer to it there. And, um, you know, that was a joke that people kind of made. Are we relying on Wilfred and Didi to save our season? (laughs) Maybe we are. But he stood up today, very good performance. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And I just want to... uh, can I get away with it? I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the comments anyway. I'll put it in the comments and I'll share this video as well. Just, just as this something that Lester just resp- put on Twitter as well. Um, just to show you a little bit about, again, you mentioned before the celebration. And this is what, again, we're looking... This is kind of the... <laughs> it's little things like that that was missing yeah. earlier in the season. And you mentioned, yeah. just when we... Again, we're jumping a little bit ahead we score the third goal. And you mentioned it goes to the... It zoomed to the pitch, and you're seeing Enzo Mavadidi jump on Enzo, Enzo Fatal, and it just the, it seems like the squad has come together. And over the four days, the flatness has come around, and this result has come such a good time. But it seems like there is an all togetherness. There's that. There's also when we play this high risk, high reward system. At times when Norwich didn't really offer too much going forward, when they did we would get the ball and we'd turn it over quickly. There'd be players in the box trying to get the ball, but also play the one-twos with each other. And that's not something I've seen in the last couple of months. No, it was way, way better in that regard. I mean, like I say, I do wonder I what the Norwich fans will think. If I was a Norwich fan, I'd be pretty annoyed with my team's performance, I have to say. And the reason why I'd be annoyed is I'd feel like we didn't even really turn up. And which is crazy because they were 1-0 up. So it's like... You've come out, you've got a goal against the run of play that's given you all of the confidence. You could literally hear in the crowd, you know, it wasn't like a penny had dropped, but it was like, you know, you could see that the players are getting stressed. It was all there for you and you haven't put the team under any pressure. Um, And yeah, and what I'm saying is that's not our fault. That meant it it meant it was easy for us. But I will say for sure, to come back to your point, which is totally agreed, which is that I think when they did start making some surges, especially in the second half when they were down, I noticed two things. One, I felt like our players were racing to get back to the ball in a lot more aggressive fashion than we have been in the last five or six matches. That had returned, not just on the high press, but also the defensive transition. And then when we did get the ball, we played it out very nicely at times, and that was good. And there weren't very many moments we were like, ooh, I don't think there was... I can't really remember any of those, to be honest. Maybe there was one, but I don't... Off the top of my head, I can't. So that's the funny thing is like, I think if we, as we're fans, you obviously feel a lot more stressed watching the game. But I think if you were watching that game as a neutral, you'd be like, okay, they went behind. But I mean, that was against the run of the play. They're blatantly still going to win the game. And they did. And then when they went 2-1 up, again, we were a bit stressed. But I think if you're neutral, you'd probably be looking at that going, well, it's over. I might as well change the channel. There's no way that team's going to lose it. And I think, you know, 10, 15 games ago, we'd have been arrogant enough to think that as well. But it's just because the team's been on such a shit run of form right now that you you literally 90th minute and you're like mm-hmm. clenching your butt cheeks and everything till Vardy gets the third. Um, 
but I think it was a very good all-round performance and fairly routine victory in the end. Yep, no, I'm with you. And I think a couple of players I want to touch on as well. A player that, again, kind of epitomised what you were mentioning. Um, Walt Foss, in the last few games, has looked suspect. Um, and that's being kind, especially with um, Hamza Chowdhury in front of him. He grew into the game for me fantastically. Pressing from the front, um, he did look, again, he did lose the ball, but he looked a lot more solid than he has been in the last few games. Um, and for the second goal, it all start. I think I've got it down. And Mavididi scores the goal, but if you watch the replay again, yeah, it was fast. Walt Fass closing in. From yeah, position, yeah, yeah, which I just wanted to mention because I've criticised him and I, I stand by my criticism. But at the same time, you've got to give him credit where it's due because I thought he was he was well. He was that, that's not unfair. Going to the half. That's not unfair criticism at all. I think unfortunately that is the thing with Walt Fass. That's why we signed him, right? So at the time, Rogers said, "I want a front-footed defender. I want someone that can challenge and get to the ball quickly." That's when Soyuncu looked good as well. Soyuncu, by the way, has left Atletico Madrid already and is at loan at Fenerbahce because he can't play that more Simeone-style thing where you need to sit and soak. He's not good at that, even though he's aggressive in the challenge. So that's the good and the bad with Fass is that when the whole team is shifted up and we're in their faces, and he can win the ball back. He's actually extremely good at that. We've never been an issue with that. Even in his first couple of games for us, he's been good at that. When he's bad, it's when we're getting pressed. Like against Bristol City, we can't judge the, the bounce of the ball and stuff like that. And so unfortunately, I hope no opposition coach is watching our channel, because otherwise, I'd be like, that's what you've got to do against this, is you've got to be brave, and you've got to press them back up. That's what Bristol City did in the last game, because the truth is that he's someone that if you make him go back the other way, he could make a rash decision, and he's not as good at doing it. What you don't want is what happened in this, where Leicester is sitting in your half, and he can push on as an additional auxiliary player at times, and win the ball back, because he's actually extremely good at doing that. And so that's always the thing, is like, why do we not play Connor Cody instead of fast, but that is literally the technical reason why we do that. Now, just just for sake, I'll be honest with you. Me personally, I actually would have played Cody in this game over fast, just because I agree with a lot of people. I think he's had four or five bad games in the row. I think sometimes you've got to send a message, and I don't think for, maybe Cody couldn't do that job as well as fast, but I don't think he'd do it worse given the current form. And I think that leadership and experience, given where we are in the season. It, is not a bad thing to have. So personally, I would have done that, but look, managers made the decision and I think the manager's been vindicated because he had a very good game probably overall, thanks to what you just mentioned. Like, I think, for example, Fast was better than Doyle overall in the game. Yes, and I think he he grew, he grew into the game as well. Yeah, His confidence was shot first half and I was probably thinking, oh, I don't agree with the decision, I'd rather play Cody, but then you see yeah. him, why he does that and again, why he's coming into the team. Um, and then also, compared to the last game, um, I don't want to touch on Pack and Zaka too much because he had a pretty quiet game. He did have an absolute weird miss that he did at 52 minutes. McCallum gives the ball away, slips, and Daka kind of tries to do three different techniques at once and just use the ball. <laughs> he was but extremely overall, frustrated with himself, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. yeah, obviously, in the first half, he did have one nice moment where I think it was Fatal who laid the ball into him. Back to goal, he laid it off and Winks put a shot that was a bit tame but was going on target. So he linked up quite well there. He didn't get too many opportunities. That was his one opportunity. But you're right. I mean, that's the thing. It's like he he did n neither one of things. Right, you know, either knock it around the keeper and try and score. You might not necessarily score that. Try and dink it over the keeper. You might not necessarily score that. Hold it and try and turn your way and you might not necessarily score that. But it looked like he tried two or three of those things at once. And so it, it was the worst of all worlds. And... You know, that's something to teach, but that's, I, you know, that's one of those things I'm wondering, can you teach if a striker? Because it's like gut instinct to do something. And, you know, what I would say there is that even if you make the wrong decision, you've just got to make a decision and commit to it as soon as you can, because then you can focus on executing that kind of technique. Otherwise, yeah, I think he tried to dink it over the keeper, but also dink it around him. He should have done one or the other. Um, yeah. So to be honest with you, I'd probably say he was our worst player today, but I don't think it's necessarily a problem. And I think it's like, he didn't get that much service. So it's not even that, like I said, a massive criticism. You did say to me that you felt he wasn't linking up so much in the game. And I agree with you. But I think it was one of those games that Norwich, for the most part, did sit back. I wouldn't say they completely parted the bus, but they were definitely at times in that second half, they couldn't get out. And I think in games like that, you know, it's he's just there to occupy almost a defender, to be honest with you. And then if the ball comes to him, can you finish it when you get the chance? And Vardy got the chance, not Daka. So... 
one of them in it. Yeah, I know what you mean. And especially as you're mentioning, as a Norwich, if you were a Norwich fan, you'd be disappointed looking at the run that Leicester's been on, going, We're trying to get playoffs. We know they're going to drop points. We should probably go for them and see what happens. They didn't do that and they got punished for it. But again, that I'm with you. I think another thing as well to mention, obviously, Pat Sandaka then was substituted for Jamie Vardy. And it's the first time we've seen, again, granted they were late, but we've made five substitutions in the game. Um, Jamie Vardy comes on for Pat Sandaka. And then afterwards, we substitute again Pratt and Chowdhury just to kind of rest in Diddy, who's just coming back, and Pereira, who's just coming back from an injury as well. Um, but we actually utilised the five subs. Do you think that was part of, do you think that led to the goal and it was part of the goal? Or do you think, because again, Vardy scored that, but is it something that we need to utilise a little bit more? Because at times in the last game, we were crying out for substitutions and they just, they didn't come or they didn't impact the game as much as they probably should. I, I heard Enzo's been watching Sesame Street with the count. One, ha, 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 two, ha, ha, ha. And he's learned how to count up to five and do substitutions. 100% he should be doing that. And to be honest with you, whilst it's good to see he'd done five subs, he did them way too late. Vardy should have come on at 60 as well. Even after we scored, I don't know why he didn't do it. You just got to keep the momentum going. Got to keep people fresh. Like been saying it time and again, especially in the division with so many games that you have to play, that... I'd almost go as saying it's unforgivable not to make the subs, especially when not being fun or anything. But I still think every single sub we made is probably better individually than any player Norwich has got. Other than Jonathan Rowe, who I believe missed the game today. That's a player who every time I've seen him has, has been impressive. I know that Gonz Sara, who scored today, is quite highly rated by them, but I don't think he did really that, that good. I mean, that's was a good set piece, oh. but that's yeah, I, I don't think he like dominated the game or anything like that. Not like um some of the art, like what's his name, Moore, Sam Morsley for Ipswich, for example, he looked like a good player, to be honest with you, when we played against him, a few others like that. So, yeah, look, it's good that he made the subs, but I think you still got to do them way sooner. I think five minutes to go, 80, fair enough, maybe that's when you can make the last two, but I think, look, I think in an alternate universe, making more subs more often, we have more points. That's my honest opinion. Even if sometimes you do lose a little bit of the performance, because I just think legs are important. Like, we just mentioned it there, the aggression to win the ball back, the press, the getting it back. That's why you got to make the subs. It's like, it's even, it's fine. Like, you know, I'm taking you off for tell. Oh, well, I've been playing well. You have been playing well, but I need I need legs right now. You're going to play the next game. No worries. There's a squad. It's a squad game. Um, so, yeah, but to be honest with you, I think he's done that because he's heard that criticism. And I think someone's told him that. Either the players have told him that, or maybe, do you know what? Maybe even someone from above has said, not being funny thing, Enzo, but all the fans are saying, why aren't you making subs, bro? Yeah. And just what, yeah. And potentially, regardless of the reason why he made them, and and as you said, the fact that we made all these, we made the subs again 85 minutes, um, 88 minutes, 85 minutes, 89 minutes, that led to potentially the third goal as well. And again, um, for that, Again, it's just a well-worked, I think the third goal, just to kind of finish up, well-worked goal. And again, it shows if you keep pressing, and something we mentioned after the second goal, at times it did that we did sit back a little bit, but we did for about five minutes or so. We were completely trying to play 4-4-2, but we, were, we took our foot off the gas. What was really impressive is the fact that they got back into that and they went for the jugular yep. and they got the third goal. I yeah, think yeah, that's... the team, it's the, it's the mentality and what Enzo's trying to instill. Even the crowd, and I don't know why we haven't been doing that all season. This is the first time in a long time where I felt rather than holding on, it just felt more like we were going to score another one. Like why we didn't do that against Ipswich. Leeds was a bit unfortunate because we could have been 4 nil up by the time they got their goals. But there have been many games that we have just been holding. Even West Brom, which we ended up winning, um, we were lucky in that game because they, they overcommitted. Um, but we should be doing that more often. In this division, we've got the quality. It's like don't sit on 2-1. I, it doesn't mean you have to be gung-ho, but you should definitely not be letting them get back into the game. And that's what was good to see, is that they had maybe a two-minute or three-minute patch where they did start getting a few... Like they managed to skin Doyle a few times. But then after that, it's felt, again, like if, it's a, if a team's going to score, it ain't going to be Norwich. Yeah, and it seems like that. And pretty much that's that's what I think we both got a job off as well. But any final thoughts on before we go as well? Because other than that, just happy with three points, but it's the way that we won them as well, which is important. Yeah, I think that was much better. Thank you guys for at least making Easter weekend not totally terrible, even if you made us wait all the way till Monday. I didn't want to see another April Fool's joke today, to be honest with you. 
come on the foxes everyone's got to rally together i know people are disappointed a bit unhappy but this is an extremely important season for us now even if it ends up we cheated because hmm. I, we don't want to end up in league one or anything like that there could be some dark shadows here so everyone get behind the team come on the foxes come on the blues let's get to the premier league again exactly and just on that as well again we look at we on that again Ipswich is to play Southampton today and Leeds, I believe, to play um, Ipswich play Southampton and Leeds to play Hall City. So it's going to be two tough games um, coming up. But currently we sit top of the table and in our next couple of games, we've got the likes of, again, Millwall, Plymouth. So, again, hopefully we can get something out of them. Thanks so much for everybody for watching. We appreciate it and all of you. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you all in the next video. So goodbye.